My name is Luke, and welcome back to another Intrabotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Dubot SC Studio industrial control application for the CR Series Dubot arms. The purpose of this video is to show you how easy it is to control the robots, while also how powerful they can be once you learn the basics of the SC Studio. Just a reminder that all relevant links are in the description down below. If you bring your attention to the Dubot SC Studio window, you will see a series of menus on the left side and a series of buttons on the top right. In the home screen, you will see a series of manuals and guides that will help you learn the SC Studio a little bit more in depth than we're going to be talking about here. On the top right, probably the most important buttons that you'll interact with in the SC Studio first one being the Robot Enable Disable button. It is red, so that means that the robot is in a deactivated state and will not move. Pressing the button opens up this end load menu where you enter the center of mass in X, Y, and Z, as well as the load value of your end effector or whatever tool you have attached to the end of your arm. Because we do not have an end effector currently loaded on it, we will just set everything to zero and continue. The robot will go through some initial setup with itself, move the motors a little bit, make some noise, and now it's green, so it's activated. The next button is the alarms button, and this shows you any active alarms, as well as a description and a solution as to how to fix them. Once you have walked through that solution, you can press this clear button, and the alarm will end, and you can again uh, control your robot. The next button is the global speed button, which sets the default uh, speed value for your robot. So we're just going to bring this down a little bit, show you how that works. So going from 70 to 45. The next button is the authority button, and this allows you to have four levels of authority and permissions for the application, depending on who is using it and what they want to do. And the final button is the emergency stop button which will stop all movement of the robot, as well as turn off the control panel. If you click on the system panel, it opens up all of these settings options. Uh, there are three primary sections that you want to look at. You have default, which is basically what we just looked at, uh, including some extra information about your controller versions. Uh, you have the parameter section, which you should go through before you set up your robot. Uh, things like setting up your tool coordinate frames, setting up any custom poses that you would like, and how you would like to control your robot remotely, whether it's through I.O. on the back of your control panel, Modbus through any Modbus network you may have, or controlling through the SE Studio. You can also monitor the status of your inputs and outputs using the I.O. monitor application. You will see indications of whether you're receiving digital input signals and can activate digital output. You can also do the same thing for your end effector. And you also have options to enable analog uh, output signals and see analog input signals. A useful feature is to click the checkbox next to any of these menus. And it'll bring a, an icon into your system tray you can quickly use to switch between tabs, even if you do not have the system panel open. Your tool config is a bit more day-to-day. -day. Um, for example, you have your end effector plugin enabled. So this is a way to monitor the status of any end effectors that you may have. Uh, a lot of them we sell in our shop, uh, things like uh, DH grippers. So we will go ahead and show you an example of one of those. If we install the DH and open it, this, this is an example of what it would look like. Just an additional plugin. You also can see a virtual representation of your robot. As well as a way to debug your um, UDP, TCP, Modbus protocols that you have set up. So here is UDP, there's network TCP, as well as Modbus. 
Now if we look at the jog panel, this brings up a few buttons to interact with your robot joints. You can either jog your robot, which means a continuous increase and decrease of your joints, or you can set it in increments of 0.1 millimeter, half millimeter, one millimeter, and five millimeters, or degrees. So we will demonstrate that now. That is moving joint one. You know, we'll speed this up a little bit so it's a bit more obvious as to what's happening. That's joint two, joint three, joint four, five, and six. And six is the end effector panel. You can also move the end effector of the robot in X, Y, and Z directions, so we can also demonstrate that. So here's moving it in Z. You can see that the point where the end effector would be is translating in the Z direction. You can also move your um, rotation. So you have rotation about the X, Y, and Z. We can demonstrate those as well. Something you can also do is set uh, tool coordinate frames, and you can translate in those as well, and that will be demonstrated in a future video. So now we're going to move on to the Blockly interface, and Blockly is just a way to program visually using a block-based programming language. We'll take a brief overview of the different sections of that, as well as some practical examples of each block, and then do a very simple script uh, using Blockly. So events, we have start and subthread start. Uh, that will start your main program as well as any other processes that you want to start, up to five total. Um, subthreads are just uh, parallel processes that run at the same time as your main thread where you can like, listen to uh, TCP sockets or interact with your Modbus and send information or receive information. We then have control, uh, which is your basic programming flow, you have things like loops and conditional statements as well as uh, sleeping for certain times, integrating any custom scripts that you have, and getting information from your controller. We also have operators where you can add, subtract, multiply any variables that you have or any um, information that you receive from your robot state as well as string operations. Variables are a way to um, track information over time in your script. So if we make a variable, we can just call it you know, a test or something. And that allows us to set and change that variable as well as interact with it in uh, the different blocks. Under IO, this is how you would interact with your control panel. So you can set and receive digital output signals and same thing with analog signals and use them in conditionals or other operations. The move section is where you would actually move your robot, whether in its joints, uh, like how you saw the J1 to 6, or in uh, linear space, which is the XYZ, RX, RY, and RZ. The Modbus section allows you to interact with your Modbus network. Um, creating your uh, server and client, and then setting and getting coils and registers. And then the same thing with the TCP communication. It's just communicating over your network through sockets. And then under here, we have things like Vision and DH, and those will come with any plugins that you install. Um, so Vision is obviously interacting with any cameras and getting and setting information from that. And DH is getting information from your gripper and then opening and closing, say for example. Here we have our points. Uh, and these are a way to remember a position of your end effector as well as whatever configuration your robot will be in at that time. And we can demonstrate that now. So. Here we will go over to our robot and press this large button on the back. And now you can see that it is both blue here 
and blinking here. This is our drag indicator and indicates that the robot is in drag mode. So we'll just put this in some you know, just random point. We'll come over here and press add. And that will add that point to the list. And we'll move it to some other point like that. And press add here again back to our robot and take it out of drag mode just by pressing the big middle button again. And you can see that it saved the X, Y, Z, R, X, R, Y, and R, Z, as well as the configuration that your robot was in and any tool or user frames that your robot is using. So another interesting feature of the point menu is being able to change the values of your points once you have them set and we can do that now. So say if we want our point two to be you know, perfectly squared off with uh, the table or whatever workstation you're at. So we can set this to 180, we can set this to zero, and we can set this to 180. Now if you go back over to Scratch, we are going to do a very simple uh, script. So we're just going to move it from point one to point two. So we'll come over to move, we're going to tell it to move joint-wise to point one. I'm going to come over to control and just grab a sleep block. Back to move. And tell it to move to point two. Okay. Now we will save this project. So we'll just call this move to point. Press confirm. We'll save again for good measure. And now we can run the script. So it should move to point one, wait a second, and move to point two. The new point two, which is not this one. It's the one that's squared off that we changed. And now the third feature of the Blockly menu is debug. And here it translates your scratch instructions, which is just what these blocks are called, into the programming language used by the robot, which in this case is Lua. And you can see our very simple script here, which is go to point one, sleep for 100 seconds, and then go to point two. Also, any global variables that we have, or if you remember, we set the one variable test, and it defaults to a value of zero. The final part of Dubat SE Studio that we're going to be reviewing today is the script section. If you bring your attention here, we can see workspace as well as a debug panel. If we click the plus button, we are given a selection of templates that we can choose from to create our project. We'll call this one empty one and click OK. And it will fill a template project for us. We see that our name is empty one. And we have our threads underneath that. If you remember from before, threads are just processes. And SC, or SRC0, which is source zero, is our main thread. And the main thread is the one that actually interacts with moving the robot. And subthreads are ones that listen to your network, like Modbus or TCP. We also have points, which is the, basically the same interface as the uh, Blockly section, where we can add and change and delete points and global, which is where we would store any variables. Um, so if we come back to Blockly, we're gonna cheat a little bit and open our project from before. Our project was called move to point. It loads everything up there. We can just go to our debug section, copy this script over here to source zero and paste that in and save. And now I'm going to create two new points uh, since we weren't able to carry those over between Blockly and the script. So I'll put it in drag mode. Again, it's flashing blue. Come over to point, add a first point, move it to some other arbitrary configuration, and press add. Okay. Is it out of drag mode? And you will save our points. Come back to our script, click build. We'll compile everything for us and just check that everything that we've entered will actually work. We can press OK. And now we can run our script.
and there we go. And move from point one to point two with a second of sleep in between. So hopefully after watching this video, you should understand just how easy it is to get started controlling a robot using the Dubot SC Studio. We are able to set up the initial settings, uh, like setting up your end effector and any communications protocols that you may want to interact with, as well as creating this very simple script to move the robot. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new today. We'll have links in the description below to any of the kits or hardware that you saw in the video. Remember, anytime any of that's purchased, it helps us as a company keep producing free content. Um, please feel free to comment in the comments below on things that you're interested in or questions you might have or any ideas about future videos that you'd want to see us get into. We're always interested in seeing how we can help the community keep innovating. Thanks again for watching.